welcome everyone to my class so last 11 weeks we have learned about that c based vlsi design so specifically all the details of converting a c or c++ high level code into rtl design so in this week uh, the way we plan this uh, week is something we'll see the other level of this uh, electronic design automation process which is basically logic synthesis and physical synthesis right so we'll just see a very uh, high level overview of these two steps and then at the uh, we will conclude this course with uh, some research, uh, recent advances in high level synthesis uh, with these things. Okay. So, let us move on. So, in today we are going to discuss about this uh, in logic synthesis in very high level. So, let us uh, look back to that VLSI uh, design automation flow that we have already familiar with because I have seen this particular diagram many times. Right. So, basically so far we talked about this uh, high level synthesis part where basically you convert a, a behavioral description into RTL. Right? So, we have seen all the detail about that steps. So, next step is basically this logic synthesis, this is primary logic synthesis and this is basically uh, this physical synthesis. Okay? So, what happens in logic synthesis? You have the register transfer level behavior. So, what is register transfer level behavior? Here you express your behavior in terms of transfer of register values. Right? So, you express your uh, every clock what are the registers get updated by which registers right. So, that is something is kind of in high level register transfer level design and then what we have to do and finally, we have to go in more detail level right. So, all this automation does is basically you bring the things in one le level of higher abstraction, but we have to finally, reach to that transistor level design right. So, to do that the next step is the logic synthesis what it does is basically convert this register transfer level design into get level design okay and then we have a physical synthesis where we convert that get level design into trans transistor level design with a proper uh, layout and then finally we do the fabrication packaging and we ic comes into market right so this is the overall process so let us this look into this logic synthesis steps it has basically two sub steps the first steps is that basically you have this uh, uh, register transfer level design you have to represent that in terms of get level design okay so there are uh, options are there, I will come into that. And then finally, once that particular generic gate level design uh, comes to your is realized, then finally, we have to represent them in, in terms of the technology mapping, in terms of the technology cells. Okay? So, if you look into this part, this is basically technology dependent, uh, the target dependent. So, if you try to map into ASIC, then what is going to happen? You have a set of cell libraries, you have to realize all those gates in terms of only the using the cells that are available in that particular cell library. Okay? On the other hand, if you try to map that particular uh, get level design into FPGA board. So, in if you mostly aware that the FPGA board has various fixed architecture, right? you have this LUTs, you have RAM, you have DSPs. So, effectively you have to map this uh, basically this uh, get level design into those uh, resources that are available in the uh, in the particular FPGA board. So, this uh, technology mapping actually uh, is different for ASIC targets and this uh, uh, FPGA target, but this logic synthesis where we actually realize this my circuit in terms of gates is something is very generic approach which is basically kind of common uh, for both. Right? So, from this technology mapping things actually bifurcate for ASIC target and FPGA target because uh, the physical synthesis is for FSIC is completely different because you have nothing, no target architecture, you have to realize your uh, whole circuit in a specific uh, area. And on the other hand, in FPGA, you have a fixed architecture, you essentially need to map your logics into those uh, resource available in the architecture. Right? So, this, this two steps uh, bifurcate in this uh, particular, uh, I mean when you target exit or FPGA. Okay? So, let us now move on to this logic synthesis. So, as I mentioned, this logic synthesis has basically uh, you know, two primary steps. The first thing is basically this, uh, this is the logic synthesis steps. The logic synthesis steps has two steps, uh, two sub steps. The first thing is the translation. right? So, you have everything in the register transfer level, you have to translate them into get level first. right? So, this is kind of tra logic translation and once you have that logic translated get level design, it is highly unoptimized. So, you need to optimize that design. So, then you have to do logic optimization. right? So, the basic logic synthesis has two. Uh, generic logic synthesis has two sub steps translation, logic translation and logic optimization. Right? This is basically generic logic synthesis. 
okay? and then we will go for the technology mapping that is the uh, second step of this logic synthesis. Okay? So, I will go I am going to do is this I am going to understand about uh, give a very brief high level overview about this uh, logic translation, logic optimization and technology mapping all these three sub steps I am going to explain in very high level. Okay? So, let us move on to the logic translation. So, the objective of this particular class is not to give you all the algorithm behind this logic translations and all these methods rather uh, what is the objective that is going to first here, what is the problem here and how they are actually getting tackled in the automation tool. Okay? So, uh, let us first try to take an example. right? So, in in, uh, in a register transfer level code we always get some kind of low code like this right? that you have some registers A, B, C and you do uh, always at the rate uh, passage of clock you do a, a equal to b plus c basically you do addition right so this is basically addition so once you read this particular uh, part of the clock uh, code what you have to do you have to realize this you understand that this particular operation is happening in some every positive edge of clock so i have to re i need to replace the represent this particular operations in terms of adder in the rtl so, then uh, the question that will come. So, what are the problem it has to solve during logic translation that I am trying to highlight with this example. right? The first question is that oh, you first you have to identify this RTL, you have to identify what is the things you want to implement right? and you uh, when you scan this particular code you understand there is a adder and you have to implement that adder. right? Now, the question comes to your mind what kind of adder I am going to implement? Is it a full adder? It is a carry look at adder? Is it is a carry save adder? But there are many other uh, adders are available, right? So many advanced available. So this is something is a full adder where the kind of uh, delay is more because it's a the delay is basically n into so if there is n bit adder, so one this one full adder adding this basically one bits uh, or two bits. So basically, if, uh, uh, sorry, basically each, each full adder basically uh, add one bit of each number, right? A and b, and then it's carry. So it's basically a uh, uh, comp. The, uh, the kind of uh, the delay of the circuit is basically order of n because the delay is getting carry forwarded right so basically it's it's a it is not so efficient design right and on, on the other end if you took a uh, carry look ahead adder you have a very fixed number of uh, uh, constant number of logic uh, uh, delay which is basically much faster right but it uh, so this something uh, is there but uh, and then you have carry save adder and many other right so, uh, based on your design constraint, based on your uh, target, uh, say your area target or performance target or latency target, you have to choose one of them. right? So, the tool automatically based on the constraint, it decide one of this architecture that I am going to add as let us say we decided that I mean, even if I implement this adder by full adder, it is fine. right? It is basically meets my design constraint. Right? So, this is something is the decision. So, this logic translation actually has to take. So, the first step is has to identify a particular operations in the RTL and then it has to take a decision uh, the kind of implementation that is going to have in based on the design constant. Okay? So, let us say uh, for sake of simplicity that it decide to go ahead with the full adder. Right? The next question that uh, will come to uh, the logic translation is that how I am going to implement this full adder. Right? So, I have decided to go ahead with the full adder, but the circuit internal circuit of this full adder can be different. Right? So, it is basically doing a addition. Right? So, if you just write the truth table of this, your S is nothing but is this. Right? So, basically if you think about this is uh, x, y and this is z, if you just think about that this way. Okay? So, uh, so, basically this S is nothing but uh, this circuit and if you just do a uh, kind of two level representation sum of product representation sum of product representation this is the sum circuit and the carry circuit is nothing but this and this uh, this is also again sum of product representation right so i can realize my single one bit uh, full adder uh, in basically using this but you all know that uh, this is not the optimized design the optimized design is basically this and we can actually do kind of uh, some optimizations uh, or we can do kind of manipulation or the uh, uh, exp uh, this uh, some kind of boolean uh, expression uh, uh, simplifications or some rules we can apply and finally we can actually identify that s is nothing but x or of this three gates right so this is what is your s and then uh, c is nothing but this and you can actually combine these two circuit into one 
where you actually share some of the resource right so basically you can understand the problem here is that you have two different output sum and carry their inputs are common that they are taking uh, two bits of the number and the carry input and if you it give a sum input and carry output right so since the inputs are common one thing is that you can actually realize them completely independent circuit this is the sum circuit and this is array circuit but since they are actually have some common functionality in this particular uh, design this is the efficient implementation of the full adder where we can actually share the uh, resource for example you can see here this xor is getting used for sum as well as to uh, compute the carry right so that's the uh, beauty of this so basically that logic transistor has to take decisions so how i'm going to do that i'm going to do this or that or specifically this will come during the logic optimization that it's basically represent this adder in some boolean expression right so and then it kind of do some optimization to realize that i can actually do this kind of sharing uh, the resource that is needed for to compute the sum and the carry and finally i can uh, come up with this kind of optimized get level representation okay so you can understand that just realizing adder it has to first identify its adding add operation then it has to take a decision based on the constant whether what kind of architecture i'm going to do and then once uh, that architecture is decided it will basically represent that architecture in terms of the boolean expressions and then it will do kind of optimization to identify this is the kind of uh, the most efficient implementation of that full adder right this is what this logic translation does so if you just go into this rtl the rtl has many components the identifying the adding subtraction multiplication division is kind of easy and you have to implement them but identifying this marks demarks decoder because in the rtl never never did you uh, usually do not have a uh, block that this is a marks right probably you have a switch case statement if you have if else statement and you have to understand this switch case is nothing but a multiplexer right it will be re realized as a multiplexer probably some from some structure probably you have to understand this is nothing but a decoder they or something is encoder or it's a comparator so basically from the rtl this logic translator has to understand this is basically nothing but this right and then it will identify the which target uh, which architecture it will be considered even for marks you can have different kind of architecture right so and then finally based on your design constant it will decide i'm going to go by this architecture and once that particular uh, architecture is uh, also decided then you can actually do kind of optimization to get a optimized get level representation of this uh, block right this is how this whole uh, logic transition happens so i just try to write it in one sentence that you identify all rtl block or operations and translate them into get level representation that is what happened in the logic translation okay so we understand that so we uh, this way we can actually represent everything uh, in the get level circuit okay now the next step comes logic optimization right so in the logic optimization uh, why we need to do logic optimization because here we do uh, kind of individual block right so we have uh, this uh, we take a individual block and we take a kind of uh, uh, their representation right so usually they this all this uh, block we represent in the gate level circuit as a boolean expression okay so then uh, there may be many uh, redundant part in the circuit there will be many things we can can be shared uh, specifically when you have uh, multiple uh, output which has kind of some same input so there will be some sub circuit which can be shared among these two uh, cone of outputs right so which is something is the optimization so the next step is basically do the optimization and uh, this optimization happen in two times uh, basically one is basically one is the take independent that you realize your rtl circuit in terms of get you apply the logic optimization you get a uh, optimized uh, get level design and then you map this uh, your uh, logic circuit or the get level circuit into uh, technology cells uh, whether it's fpg or asic and then again you op optimize right so there are uh, take dependent optimization also there right so but usually uh, this logic optimization indicates the uh, take independent logic optimizations okay so here what is that of logic optimization input you have kind of a boolean network which we can which is represented by many forms i'll come to that and you try to map them is basically you try to optimize that design in terms of the number of gates you can assume that okay so the to do that you as i mentioned that you need some kind of representation of the circuit right so you need to represent your circuit conventional circuit uh, or which is kind of nothing but a boolean function 
uh, somehow right. So, and we are aware that there are many kind of representations available one is truth table which we learn in our undergraduate class. We can have this sum of product or product of some kind of representation which is basically list of cubes or conjunction and also we have different kind of uh, uh, other representation like binary decision diagram BDD, Boolean formula, uh, Boolean network and say hypercube uh, form right. So, all are basically representing the same thing based on your algorithm you can actually uh, take some form right. And uh, once you uh, take this uh, logic optimization there are two kind of optimizations involved here one is uh, two level optimizations and the other one is basically multi level optimization ok. So, what is uh, two level optimizations and what is multi level optimization let us try to understand. So, in the two level optimizations we usually represent our boolean expression in sum of product or product of some form right. So, basically you have two level of gets right. So, if it is a sum of product form this is the AND plane right and this is the OR plane. To give an example say A B plus C D bar plus E A bar and so on right. So, this is the product term which can is basically can be represented by AND gets this is all AND gets and this is all AND gets and this is the OR gets. Right. So, this is this is basically the AND plane where all this product term will be represented and the sum will be the OR plane right. So, this is what the two level representation. So, here the cost is basically the number of uh, product term basically which is uh, actually called mean term. So, number of product term is there. So, the those many AND gate is also there and the size of the AND gate right. So, the AND gate how many pins are there. So, one two input AND gate and uh, one seven input AND gate is not same right. So, the idea will be different. So, so the number of uh, product term is also important and uh, how many literals are there in each product term that is also important because that determine the size. For example, if it is A B C A B that means, I need a AND gate of two input AND gate right. So, this is A B. If I uh, input four this is a four input AND gate right say A B say C bar D bar. So, so, basically uh, the number of product term is also important and uh, so each product term is one AND gate and thus uh, number of literal in each product term is also important and then if you see here that number of product term also determine the how many uh, what is the size of the OR gate right. So, if there is a three product term that means I need a three input OR gate if I have say 10 product term I need 10 input OR gate right. But if you understand that in literally if you just reduce the number of literals right. So, then basically you can understand that for each uh, literal we need kind of uh, some gates right. So, if you just reduce the number of literals in this whole expression basically none of none, so literal in the sense a a bar b b bar these are all literals right. So, uh, if you just reduce that it will eventually reduce the overall circuit right. So, try to that means given a boolean expression in the two level uh, optimization what it try to does it try to guide, find out a minimum uh, boolean expression which has minimum number of literal right. So, which is essentially nothing but your optimized uh, design I will come to that how we will do that. On the multi level logic it is not two level right. So, I do not need to represent this as a sum of product or product of sum uh, rather it is basically can have a level multiple level of inputs right. So, the same circuit here I just represent in four levels right it is a two level it is a four levels right. So, usually when we write, write something in a factored form say like A into B plus D into E plus F. So, this if when you write an expression like this, this is not uh, something uh, sum of product form right. So, it is basically mixed expression and if you try to represent this uh, uh, network directly you will basically have a multiple levels right. So, basically you have a OR gate uh, let, let me try to understand where I am going to do E, e and F then I have AND gate where I am going to do with D, this I am going to do a OR gate with B and then I am going to do a AND gate where I am going to give A right. So, you can understand that just to when you have this expression in a factored form uh, then uh, when you try to realize we have to realize in a multi level representation. So, two level representation is easy to implement and there are a lot of uh, um, algorithms and is well studied things. So, uh, uh, so, sometime we represent the things in a uh, uh, sum of product form and we actually apply two level optimizations because finally, at the end of the day if you just reduce the number of literals 
that is something uh, will reduce your circuit size. But sometimes you do not convert this into sum of product because any Boolean formula can be represented as a sum of product form, right? This is a normalized rep representation. So even if this I can represent in terms of sum of product form, like right? so, like something like this, right? So D plus D F plus B, right? This is nothing but this into A. So this is I can represent A B plus A D E plus A D F. So this is the sum of product representation. So given a Boolean expression, I mean I can always convert into sum of product form or product of some form, uh, and then I can apply these two level optimizations, or I can keep the expression as it is, and then I will try to do multi level logic optimizations, right? So I will come to into that. So multi level the the primary advantage is that you can actually uh, optimize across functions, right? So if you have function one, which is the expression is this. I have function 2 which has some expression, I can actually identify uh, the common sub expression here and then I can actually optimize across functions, okay? which is not something happened for 2 level because 2 level it is basically take one uh, output bit and it take the its expression and try to optimize it. Right? So, this bo both has uh, applications, but both are getting used in logic optimizations. Okay? So, let me just go ahead uh, with this uh, method. So, for two level optimizations, we are all familiar with uh, the, what is Carnot map, what is Queen McCloskey method, and there is also heuristic based approach called Espresso. So, uh, so basically, and for multi level optimizations uh, techniques like factoring, decomposition, extraction, substitution, elimination, this kind of techniques getting used, right. So, let me just move on and I just give a, uh, a very high level idea of both the technique. Okay? So, uh, in two level optimization as I mentioned that if uh, your essential objective is to minimize the number of AND gates and or AND gate or AND gate size eventually the number of literals right very high level. So, what is the approach usually happen? So, here its idea, idea is that you identify the implicants right. So, you I mean I, I mean uh, you probably saw all award that what is kind of implicant what is prime implicant and what is essential prime implicant it is basically nothing, but you have some of the terms which is one. Uh, so, if you just take this fu function is a sum of product representation and if you just assume the variables are basically a, b and c, d, you can represent this as a product terms. Right? So, this is nothing but a bar, b bar, c bar and d bar, this is a, um, a bar, b bar, c bar, d right? and so on. So, this is how we represent as a uh, product and if you just realize it since how many terms are here, there are 8 uh, eight product terms are there. So, and each of them is basically 4 uh, literal. So, I need 8 and get right uh, 8 and get each of them basically has 4 inputs. So, basically I uh, number of literal is basically 32 right. So, there are 32 literals are there and you need basically uh, 8 and get and 1 or get of size 8 right. This is how I can uh, realize this circuit without any optimization. Then what usually we do? We try to identify a cover, right? A basically implicant, which is basically uh, the basic idea in high level that if you take two consecutive uh, object, I mean two literal, so these are all one on uh, min term. So if you take two consecutive min term, I can reduce one of the min terms pop there, right? Because they have one uh, literal common, right? So this is how I can actually identify implicant, and then I can identify the prime implicant, which basically is the uh, the minimize the maximum kind of size of this mean term which is basically covering many mean terms and which cannot be extended further right so if you think about the individually these are all one one mean terms right so i expand this uh, to two right so earlier there are uh, eight uh, so one of the each mean term has four literals so there are eight literals when i combine them they will turn into three right so from eight it will become three three literals are there right and then if I extend to uh, another level, so this is now 4, you can assume that this is a folded structure. So, uh, this is how the Carnot map realized. So, then it will become 2. So, from uh, 8 literals, it become 2 literal and 1, one prime implicant. Right? So, the idea is that you uh, try to cover this your on terms and uh, sometimes there is a do not cat terms also with implicant. So, that uh, you can actually cover all this 1 with minimum number of such implicant. Right? 
and the approach is basically uh, I mean it is very well known that you identify the essential prime imprint and that means some prime imprint and they are actually covering some of the one which is not covered by somebody else right you need you must need this this particular prime implicant right. So, you identify all the essential prime implicant and you have to select them because they are covering some uh, something which is not covered by anybody else right and in addition you identify uh, other prime implicants to co uh, um, cover all the ones and do not care of your circuit right. So, you this is must and then you basically select minimum number of other implicant or prime implicant. So, that all of your mean terms uh, are actually covered right? this is the overall approach and if you look into the Carnot map uh, the example I was taking here. So, you basically find this is one essential prime implicant which is basically nothing but uh, C D and if you take this one and this one is nothing but this is. So, let me just try to understand this is A bar B bar and this is. Uh, so, this is 0 0, this is 0 1, this is 1 0, this is 1 1 right. So, basically here you can understand that this is sorry this is 1 0, this is 1 1. So, this is A uh, because sorry this is B bar and then this is 0, 0, 0 and C bar right. So, basically we can understand that. So, basically this uh, this is one essential prime implicant and this is one essential prime implicant. So, I can understand that there are 32 literals earlier and now you have only C D and B bar C bar right. So, this basically has 4 uh, literals ok. So, so this is the optimization this Carnot map does and if you go into this coin map plus key method tabular method it also does the same thing it identify all the essential prime implicant and then try to identify the other prime implicant to cover all the terms. This is the approach it does, but you can understand this is only 4 variables, but if you have say more variables. Uh, this uh, tabular method or uh, Carnot map method is basically not uh, so efficient ok. So, for that uh, and this method is not so scalable also you can understand that. So, for that usually uh, the things is happening is using uh, a heuristic approach which is called espresso ok. So, uh, for that you can actually realize your n boolean variable function as a n dimensional boolean space right. So, basically if you have a uh, one variable it is nothing but this if you have two variable your uh, cube is this if you have three variable it is a cube and if it is a uh, four variable it looks like this right and you can actually realize it this way. So, the idea here is that once you have this kind of circuit and some of the so each of this uh, uh, circle is representing one mean term and give in a given function only some of the mean terms will be one not all right then it is a the function become one. So, and your idea is to cover this all this uh, on terms with uh, minimum number of prime implicant right that is the idea. So, for example, here you have uh, this is the three dimensional space this red uh, red circles are the on terms and this is one don curve term. So, basically your idea is to identify this is the one essential prime implicant and this is one other essential prime implicant and that will cover all the uh, terms here. So, it is basically you have you need two kind of uh, product terms right. So, so this is the overall idea. So, somehow you have to cover all these on terms and do not care with minimum number of such prime implicants right. And as I mentioned this uh, Carnot map method Quinn McCloskey method is not so scalable because they are not they are they do not work uh, well for um, large number of variables. So, usually you go by go by heuristic approach which is espresso. And this is nothing but a simulated annealing based method because uh, and if you understand the simulated annealing method is like basically if you start from some uh, solution space and if you try to optimize you try to reach to a global minimum right. If it is a convex space you have always unique uh, mm, such thing you can always reach to that, but usually the solution space may be like this and if you starting from this you try to optimize you might reach this point right, but this is kind of a local minimum. So, you may not reach to the global minimum for because from this starting point if you try to optimize you try to always reduce the cost you may not never get this right. So, the what simulated manager's annealing method does basically it start from any some random point and try to reach the minimum and it gets it this is the current best solution. Then again it start from any other random points right say starting from this random points. Again it might uh, if we start from this random points it will it will reach to this point again right it will go to the same solution, but it say it start from this point now eventually it will go to this global minimum. Right. So, the simulated annealing method is like you start from one random point you try to reach the um, local minimum 
and then again you randomly start from other starting point and then try to get the minimum points and if you keep doing this eventually you can uh, hit upon this global minimum right and this is this algorithm is also kind of any time algorithm because uh, every time you have a solution right if you just select a random um, point this is also a solution and uh, based on your time availability you can actually run the uh, heuristic according to your uh, requirement right and if you run say uh, so sub some uh, say, for, say, say for say 5 second you might get this is a solution if you run for say 1 minute probably you will get this solution at that point that is the best solution right it will always keep track of what is the best current solution if you run for say for 10 minutes probably you can reach this global solution as well right? this is any time algorithm and but it's all basically a heuristic based approach and this espresso is very very popular and specifically widely used in the EDA tools how uh, for logic optimizations. So, I will go give, give you the very brief, brief idea about this espresso. So, basically as I mentioned it has basically it will start with some initial cover of the terms because you have uh, what is the problem you have set up on terms and some do not care and need a cover uh, some cover which is covered all the points right. And then it try to do some kind of uh, apply three optimize three operations which is called reduce, expand and redundant there are three operations just keep applying keep applying until it reach some global point unless you find a minimum solution. Then it basically for further improvement uh, it will basically start from another random point and do that right. So, let me try to explain this expand reduce and redundant operation. So, ex so, as I mentioned that it start with some initial uh, starting point right so, and what can be the starting point. So, you, your cover may have all the individual min terms right. So, suppose these are the points these are the mean terms are there in your function right. You try to find out a cover which will cover uh, all this mean term with minimum literal right. So, the solution here is basically is this, this is 1 and this is 1 right. So, you can understand this is basically C and this is nothing but uh, A bar B bar right. So, this is basically the solutions for this and these are individual uh, literal basically represent this is nothing but uh, a bar b bar and c this is in this term right and so on you can understand that. So, basically what expand so initially you can assume that my each all mean terms are the cover right. So, initially I have 5, five mean terms and there are uh, 15 literals because each, each mean term has uh, 3 variables right 3 literals. Then what exp expand does is start from any uh, available uh, mean term and try to expand in many direction right. So, uh, any direction. So, if I try to expand this way because I uh, will get this. So, this is a mean term where I have 2 uh, literal now right. It, we do not try to go this way because this is not a on term right it will just expand this way. So, the idea of expand is that randomly if we pick a solution we try to expand in some direction. So, it will basically try to expand this way then it will try to expand this way it will take start from this point and again try to expand this way. So, now I have this many mean terms right. So, uh, there are many mean terms will be created which is basically one level smaller right earlier each mean term has 3 literal now I have every literal every mean term has 2 literals right this is what the expand operation and it will, it will done randomly it will pick any random mean terms and try to expand if it is expand is possible it will create the new terms that is all right. Then uh, once you create that you can understand that you might create many redundant uh, mean terms because you might have uh, some terms which is covered by more than one mean terms and uh, as a result you can actually uh, remove some of them ok. So, for example, here say suppose some expand happen and these are the kind of uh, mean terms you obtain which is uh, marked as the yellow line and you can clearly understand this is one essential because it is covering this one. This is essential because this is uh, covering this one which is not covered by anybody. This is also essential because this is covering this one which is not covered by anybody, but this is basically not essential right. So, I can remove this one or uh, other way if you pick this one is as essential because this will pick this then I can remove this one which is the solution given here. So, the irredundant and after applying this expand you just remove some of the uh, redundant uh, cubes right. So, that is what the idea of this irredundant and the reduce is the reverse operation of the expand because you expand some way and that mean in that direction you may not able to uh, give a good solution. So, you reduce randomly and then you try to go in other direction right. So, for example, suppose if you started from this you reach this way you get this one right. But if you probably uh, come back and if you start from this point and if you try to go this way and probably you can actually cover the whole thing right that is what is the best solution. So, the idea here is that you uh, 
uh, at some point you basically reduce some of the mean term. So, if it is a n variable uh, mean term it will become n plus 1 now right and then you try to expand in other directions and it will actually try to go give a better other solutions right and then you can actually probably get a better solution. So, this is the three operation it does if you just look into the espresso this is that inner loop right. So, the it will find a local minimum you apply reduce you expand and you do redundant you keep doing it in until your cost is stable that means no further improvement is possible. So, this will give you a local minimum then what you does you pick a random points right. So, what you basically you are doing here you just add some random cubes you expand some of the cubes randomly and then you make sure that you have a redundant cover and then you go back and try to do the same process again right. So, this will actually give you the global um, optimized points. Right. So, in general this espresso is something actually getting implemented no Karnum app no Karnum app key for two level optimization uh, usually in uh, tool espresso gets implemented. So, I just uh, give you the overall idea of this espresso and how it does the whole process ok. So, that is all about this uh, two level expressions now let us move to the multi level. So, uh, why this two level is not always sufficient because uh, the first thing is that uh, it has uh, too restrictive right. So, only two levels and sometime uh, that does not give you the uh, best representation right. Sometime uh, this uh, SOP representation is actually impractical because it is become exponential ok. The classical example is the parity bit. So, if you suppose you have a odd parity generator right. So, if the odd parity says that if number of so, the parity bit check is that. So, basically if it is odd, uh, odd parity it makes sure the number of uh, 1 in your uh, number in your uh, circuit is always say odd number right. If it is not then parity will become will be 1 right. So, for example, say if this is 0 0 0 and the parity is 0 that means, so this is for even parity ok. So, it is correct because this uh, parity is even, but here you can see here this is uh, 0 0 0 and this is 1 then the parity bit is 1 that means, this is uh, uh, parity check is wrong it is not basically uh, even number of 1 is there right. So, if this is something the parity bit generator it will just say key whether your if the number of uh, 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 1 in a particular number is basically even then it will say 0 if it is odd it will say 1 right. And if you try to realize this uh, parity bit generator into boolean circuit because you can see here there are 4 variables. Uh, I and this uh, the bits where it is 1 if you just put it here they are actually these circles. You can see here no Karnum map can reduce anything right. So, it basically means that whatever so basically if there are uh, 4 bit uh, parity uh, 4 bit received message. So, there are 2 to the power 4 there are 16 mean terms and you have always half of them is basically even half of them is odd right. So, there will be 8 uh, mean terms is always present and each of them is 4 bit. So, always it will be 32 32 bit literal expression right. So, basically you need always exponential number of implicants in SOP form. So, in such cases uh, sum of product is not something or two level optimization a uh, two level representation is not something sufficient ok. So, on the other hand uh, specifically for multiple function of uh, multiple functions you can act meet, uh, cannot find out the common sub expression or the common part of two expression in two level right. So, that is why you usually multiple level optimization is also very important. So, the uh, the uh, best advantage is that it actually uh, try to give you a circuit which is need less area and delay compared to the two level optimization because it can actually identify common sub expression in a big expression it just not does not reduce the literals, but also can identify common sub expression right. So, for example, say you have this a into b plus c and then say you have c into b plus c right. So, if I just write this in SOP form, so this is basically A B plus A C plus C B plus uh, sorry say suppose this is D right. So, this is a D B plus D C right. So, it is basically you can represent this way and then it is basically B plus C into A plus D. So, you can understand this is much simpler expressions uh, in compared to this. Uh, sum of product representation ok. So, usually if you just consider this uh, uh, multi level uh, representation you can actually identify this is the common sub expressions right this is the common sub expressions I mean more realistically and also you can actually identify this such, such kind of common sub expression across uh, function also. So, that is another big advantage 
but this is something is a more difficult problem okay it's not so easy to solve okay so again you can do this multi level synthesis for both technology dependent and independence but i'm just talking about for independent synthesis okay so now take that parity bit example again and how does it help right so if i just write this uh, expressions that all one this is the my expression right so these are all one if you just write this it will be expression and then you can actually find out the common sub expression the example i gis, just give uh, in the previous uh, slide right so this is a common sub expression this is a common sub expression so i can combine them this is a common sub expressions and i can combine them and this is nothing but xor right and this is x not right so i can actually re rewrite this whole thing in terms of this right i just identify these common expressions and i i realize this is nothing but xor so i just replace this as xor and this is by x not and then i identify this is actually common so i just combine this this term with this term and i'll get this and i can combine this term and this term i'll get this and again i identify this is nothing but there is a uh, this is nothing but a xor representation right because you can see this is if you just see this is a uh, b and this is basically a bar b, uh, b bar right or sorry this is basically a bar b and this is a b bar okay so this is nothing but this okay so i can actually again identify common sub expressions and i can re realize this 32 literal thing using just four literal and the circuit is this right so this basically there are three xor circuit so this is the optimal representation of this parity bit generator and this is possible when you actually take this whole expressions and you try to uh, handle this multi level logic optimizations which is basically the idea is that to identify the common sub expression right this is the the most important optimizations you identify within the functions uh, and then you can actually realize this kind of uh, optimized representation which is not possible if you go for two level optimizations okay so this is very good example to highlight uh, this particular thing and then also you can take multiple expressions and again you can identify such common sub expressions among uh, multiple boolean expressions and you can actually share that particular resource okay so here is a good example so uh, say suppose you have this circuit where these are the inputs and this is the output and usually for this kind of logic multiple logic op optimization you actually uh, draw a boolean network right so basically uh, you, you can just think of it as a gate level representation sometime you can one node can represent a sub expression as well okay so either it can be a uh, individual gate or sometime you can combine some individual uh, gate and i can find any some expressions and each node can represent a sub expression as well right so if you take this uh, uh, expression its equivalent representation is this i am not going into detail how we get it but you can always look into that but what is my objective there are four output i try to identify uh, the common commonality and i try to share them here you can understand they are all individual right so w is computed by this expression uh, x is computed by this expression y is computing by this expression so, uh, you can understand there is a boolean gates corresponding to that and this is this right so my uh, point here i try to understand is there any common uh, commonality between these two behavior right so i can see here that here this is nothing but uh, e into c plus d right so this c plus d is something a sub expression here and if you look into this i can also see that basically a into c plus d plus b into c plus d plus e so it is nothing but c plus d into a plus b plus e right so i can see here that this c plus d can be shared for x and y and i just identify this common sub expression among these two and i can actually uh, simplify this boolean network right this is what the example is given here that you identify this so this is now c plus d and i can utilize it to calculate p and i can utilize this calculator so this is what is actually getting shared between these two and that simplifies the network right this is what uh, to be done uh, in the multi level optimizations okay so uh, how it can be done right so basic idea is that you have uh, big expression you identify the common sub expression within the expression and also you identify the common ex sub expression among uh, two multiple expressions also right the question is how we can do that though so there are uh, three or say four approach algorithmic batch you can actually have defined some algorithm where you can actually um define certain transformation you can just try to see that whether that kind of transformation is possible in the network 
or you can actually go for rule base you can define certain rules which is basically again kind of a you have a database of the rules and you just try to apply the rules in your circuit but the most way the common way it can be done is basically algebraic model right so you can understand that is a common sub expression right so how we can identify the common sub expression first within the function and then across the function that's something uh, can be done very efficiently using algebraic model. So, what I am going to do is I am just going to give a very high level idea of this algebraic model. So, in the algebraic model the idea here is that I am going to represent that expression in terms of Boolean expression, but I am now I am considered that particular expression as an algebraic formula right. So, it is algebraic formula and then uh, the basic idea here is that you basically you have to identify the common sub expressions. So, I am going to apply the division operation right. So, this is a very nice idea. So, for example, say uh, you have this uh, say a b plus the same example let me take again a, a c plus say e right. So, if you this is the expression if I just um, say divide it by a what I am going to get I am going to get here b plus c I am going to get e here right. So, this is my quotient this is the dividend and this is the actual function right and this is my remainder. So, the idea is that I am going to apply divide this uh, expression uh, using some mean terms ok. So, this is the mean terms here I am going to always take the mean terms ok. So, mean terms is basically a basically product a product term right it is it is not any or operator say say a or a b c say a b c b c these are all mean terms ok. So, I am going to always uh, divide my uh, actual Boolean expression as a formula with some mean term and I am going to get some. Uh, quotient and some reminder and this quotient is something uh, I will talk about this is basically kernel if this is the minimum there is no sub expression again right. So, if, if you get something say you get a b plus a c you can get this also right. So, uh, a c so this is not a kernel because it, it can be factored again right. So, you can represent this again a plus c b plus c but this is basically a kernel because if this particular expression is uh, no further uh, division is possible this is the minimum expression then I am going to take out the kernel. So, this is a common sub expression. So, the basic idea is that you take a formula you keep dividing with some mean term you get some the reminder the or sorry quotient you check that quotient can be further simplified right or find further factored if it is not then this is a kernel and these kernels are nothing but the common sub expression. And in the within the formula if you identify such uh, common sub expression multiple times you can combine them across the formula if you get such common uh, um, sub expression you can combine uh, you can actually extract and you can share them that is the basic idea right. So, uh, uh, so this is what I just explained there that you actually uh, uh, divide this with some single key or the main terms and then you basically uh, get a quotient this quotient is basically kernel if it is a cube free that means non further factorization is not possible and whenever you get the kernel this is nothing but a common sub expression and you can actually identify such common sub expressions and you can eliminate them right. So, uh, again example say suppose I have this function is given I say first I divide it to 1 and I will get this. So, this is not a uh, cube free because it has a common term b then I divide this form term with uh, a. I will get this as a quotient, but this is not a kernel because b you can uh, simplify it further with b right. I can write this as b into c plus d. So, this is not a kernel, but if I uh, divide this uh, f by b and then I will get this this is kernel because this is not simply can be simplified further or if I divide this by a b I will get. So, this is my um, a b. So, this is my quotient and this is my reminder this is a kernel because this cannot be simplified further. So, for this formula there are two uh, sub expression one is this and one is this. So, this I identify for this formula and now I can identify the same thing uh, for the other formula also right. So, I will identify those formula and then how this can be done is basically given by this Brayton and McCullum uh, McMullen uh, theorem it is basically it is saying that you identify all such common sub expression one formula identify all the common sub expression in the other formula and the common sub expression for uh, the uh, for both the formula it will be in, in the intersection of this two uh, kernels ok. So, the idea is very simple you take a formula you identify all the kernels that means all the common sub expressions and then you take a intersection of these two and whatever the intersection has uh, common sub expression that is something is the common sub expression among 
multiple expression right so uh, uh, so this is the overall algebraic method that you take a formula you identify all the kernels which is the basically the common sub expressions using the division method you take another formula you identify all the kernels then you do a intersection you identify the intersection whatever the formula is there you identify the um, multi q common divisor right? or basically the common sub expression here and that is the uh, common sub expressions and you can rewrite the formula again with the common sub expression because that is the part i'm going to share right this is the idea of uh, doing the multi level logic optimization using algebraic method okay so again i just if i take a two examples say if these are the kernels and for g these are the kernels you can verify cross check and for that uh, the divisor was this the co kernels and so among these two i can only see that if i take intersection only this and this has some common term the intersection has a plus b right so this a plus b is the common among these two so so i can identify that this for this two formula uh, there is a common sub expression which is nothing but a plus b and i can rewrite this formula where a plus b is something a common term you can actually cross check so uh, and then uh, uh, so basically this is nothing but a plus b is, see if i just find out this a plus b is uh, the common sub expression uh, you can rewrite this as this that and say e into that sub expression f dash that was the say sub expression which is a plus b this is f dash and then you have c d e plus a b and here also you can see here this is nothing but a b plus uh, you can here see here that so this is nothing but sorry you can cross check here so but uh, let me just uh, give you that so here actually the common term is there so ad plus a, a, a e into a plus b plus bc right so so this is the common sub expression so i can replace this by uh, basically uh, e into f bar right so this is how i can rewrite so that's the overall idea of this algebraic method so uh, uh, let's uh, so this is what it is done and it is something very important because certain cases two level optimization is is impractical and it has many advantage this multi level optimization right because you can actually identify common sub expression among multiple expression as well okay so uh, so this is all about this uh, logic translation and then logic optimization the last phase as i mentioned so this i have already discussed this i have also discussed the next phase is basically technology mapping okay and as i also men already mentioned that for technology mapping target architecture is important so we have different two type of uh, targets architecture one is asic one is fpg right so asic i just mentioned this is application uh, uh, so it's basically uh, does not have any uh, target architecture so you have what is you have you have a standard cell library right so the classic example is basically you have minimum number of cell here which is a really complete set which can represent uh, any gates okay so for asic design uh, the idea is like this you have a standard cell library usually it is only an and gate or say only nor gate or you can have and or and not gate which is the complete set basically right and you have uh, in your circuit in the gate level circuit you have all possible gate xor gate xnor gate and and nor everything is there right what you have to do you have to basically uh, represent the other gates in terms of the gates or the cell that is uh, available in the cell library okay so for example suppose uh, uh, this is some your objective is to do the and gate so this is the and gate but so suppose you are in the target library you have only the nand gates so i can represent and by this you can cross check i am not going to detail so i can rewrite my and gate using this my non gate uh, not gate using the nand gate like this my or gate uh, using the nand gate uh, nand gate use li uh, like this say nor gate i can rewrite using only nand gate like this and so on so there may be many other also so this how i can actually re write my uh, rewrite my logic uh, circuit only using the technology cell libraries okay you can understand that if you just do that you have lot of again redundancy comes into your circuit again you have to do the uh, optimizations again you can apply this uh, to multi level optimizations uh, to make this circuit minimal right so if you consider the fpj mapping as i already mentioned that it has uh, fixed architecture it has specific resource like lut's dsp's and ramram 
So, your objective is to map this gate level design into LUTs. If there is a multiplier or multiplier and accumulator kind of circuit, it, it has to be mapped into DSPs. If you have a large memory, you try to map into ROM, right. So, again, this is something different from ASIC target, and uh, you uh, I am going to take one particular session where I am going to talk about how efficiently or how what is the steps, what are the kind of algorithm uh, involved, uh, how to, uh, to map this. Uh, LUT mapping, DSP mapping and RAM ROM mapping in FPGA technology. Okay. So, this is how this uh, whole uh, logic synthesis works and, uh, and uh, I just try to explain that whole process in very high level uh, and try to give the complexities and the kind of algorithm which is basically very popular or uh, commonly getting used in the whole process without going into much detail. Okay. So, with this I conclude today's class. Thank you.